Pastor Dowell in the Straightway Deception. If today I had on this video clip, T.D. Jakes, Joel Osteen, any of you name them preaching the word while drinking hard liquor and beer, you would most likely say that they're false teachers and that they need to repent because they have little to no reverence to the word of God while preaching the gospel. And you would be right to say so. Because the word of God says in 1 Timothy 3.2, a bishop then must be blameless. The husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. There's a movement called the Hebrew Israelite movement. And we'll dive into this movement within the next few weeks or so. However, I first need to deal with Pastor Dowell and the straightway deception. And a longer video is coming. This is simply an intro to Pastor Dowell. Because it's hard for me to believe that there are people that you want to point the finger at Christianity, yet you watch this filth? I'm going to keep my foot. Boy, this is damn thing. Yeah. I'm a dad. I'm a father figure. You know what, yeah, what I'm saying? Right. But my foot. I don't give a about that. I don't, you know what I mean? Yes. I was talking about look at him drinking. I went over that too. This is calling. What beer is this one? Is this gross? You accuse me like you did Jesus. I'm a wine bibber. In this case, a beer bibber. Hallelujah. We go over to the law too. Got me some nice little strong drink over here too. Let's take the edge off of it. Oh, yeah. Huh? And look at how he talks to them. You done lost the spirit or some bleep. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and roll. We've been rolling on. Yes, sir. What's wrong with y'all? Y'all done lost the spirit or some shit? <laughs> y'all look like y'all seen a ghost. <laughs> what the going on in here? And yes, I say bleep because you should not be uttering anything that's even close to profane when preaching the gospel. Let me give you an example. Okay. And this is just an example. All right. In the Latin culture, if you go to Mexico, they can call a bug, an animal, a bicho. All right. A bichito. There's a different types of bugs that they have out there. But if you go to Puerto Rico, that's not that what it means at all. If I am a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I have to understand that I am an ambassador of Christ on this earth. Therefore, I don't belong in, in any of these nations. I belong from the kingdom from above. So it is my responsibility to know that if I am preaching in Puerto Rico and a little bug lands on my laptop, I'm not going to call it by something that I know very, very well that is an offensive, derogatory, cursed type of a language in that nation. Because I am supposed to be blameless as an ambassador from the kingdom of Jesus Christ. The problem is, is that you have people that proclaim that there's some sort of special genealogy. I am the true Hebrew, he says. They're the true Hebrews. They're the true Hebrews, and you can't tell them otherwise, right? But they boast about the fact that their DNA has some sort of something special, so they're Jewish, right? But by their actions, by how they talk, by how they express, by what they portray, you're not demonstrating holiness. You can claim to be a true Jew all you want to in the exterior man. But inwardly, do you have that reverence, Pastor Dowell? What's wrong with y'all? Y'all lost the spirit or some shit? Y'all look like y'all seen a ghost. What the f going on in here? Do you have that reverence to those that follow Pastor Dowell inwardly? Romans 2.29, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart and in the spirit and not in the latter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. So you have people that will say, I'm a true Hebrew Israelite. But are you saved by Jesus Christ? And if you are, be a better example of the kingdom that you belong to. You hear beefing with Gino Jenny about one wife versus three wives. That's the least of your worries, sir. And I say that respectfully, Mr. Dowell. That's the least of your worries, sir. I've been on YouTube since 2008, sir. And since I've been on YouTube, Pastor Dowell, I've seen so many changes in you and not for the better.
See, once upon a time when people would tune into your channel, they would see some educational content. How to raise cattle, how to do this with chickens, how to have a community, but what is this mess called disguised by Hebrew living? And why do you talk to those men the way you talk to? And even try to utter a word that you know is a considered in this land something derogatory, right along with the Holy Spirit. And then try to say they accused Jesus too when he drank. You ain't Jesus. You ain't Moses. You ain't none of the biblical characters that you're always trying to compare yourself to. And if none of the men that are around you are willing to tell you that, then I hope you listen. Because your filthy language is now passing on to others. And your behavior is now contagious. Because now other people within your quote unquote ministry are now using the same filthy type of language, thinking it's cool. Like Elder Kabir, the ex NFL football player. When I think of a Christian woman, I think of Jezebel. When I think of a Christian woman, I think of a wicked <laughs> woman. They think it's cool to mix the word of God when you're preaching to throw in a couple of expletives. So cool, isn't it? I'm a Hebrew Israelite that cusses and drinks on camera. Praise the Lord. When I think of a Christian woman, I think of Jezebel. When I think of a Christian woman, I think of a <laughs> wicked <laughs> woman. But that's just the beginning of things. Because you have three wives. And according to you, you can have three wives. Yet you have not one full-time job. Who pays for those three wives, Mr. Dow? Does the community pay for the three wives? Let's say, for example, you were in the military, which I think you were. And in the military, you probably get a check around 3000 a month, maybe? Which is kind of the relative income that most people make. A little bit less than 3000 Out of that, taxes, medical insurance, everything. Then you're left with a little bit over two grand to pay mortgage, food, and everything else. And by the end of the month, you're struggling. Check the check. So if that's the real life of a person with one family, imagine three families because you have three wives, yet not one full time job. So who pays for the three wives, Mr. Dow? They got you with three wives. They got you eating ruffles and beer and liquor. Eating ruffles, potato chips. <laughs> eating ruffles, potato chips. <laughs> no wonder you walk around acting like you're He-Man. No one can out fight you. No one can out argue you. No one can out debate you. You're the, the Hebrew Israelite he-man of the world. 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Smoke. You don't want this smoke. And I'm putting it out there for all y'all. See, so how is it that he can get behind his pulpit and talk like that? And ain't nothing wrong. But when I talk like that, Come everything on. is wrong. Come on. Man, y'all a bunch of two-faced hypocrites, man. man. We, Let me we, tell y'all something. I'm gonna set a lot of people free. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So Pastor Dowell, as the leader of the community, is very well taken care of. He has all the liquor he wants. He has ruffled potato chips. Eating ruffles potato chips. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Eating ruffles, potato chips. <laughs> he has three wives that are being taken care of by the community. And surely he does work hard. One thing for sure, when you see his videos, he's always supporting the community. He's always laying blocks. He's always giving instructions. He's, he's a leader. He's doing what he has to do to lead. However, it's pretty easy to do so. When you're in a position, then most likely the land is signed over to his name, to his foundation. What happens to those that are part of the community that have donated everything that they have, right? And we'll talk about, uh, about that in the future video that I'm making, when they decide to leave. Are they in a position that as individuals who have contributed to the community, to the liquor, to the ruffles, to the three wives, to, the, to everything, are they in a position that, let's say, for example, they decide to leave straightway, can they simply say to Pastor Dow, listen, Pastor Dow, we're leaving. We've pretty much given you everything we have for years, but we're leaving straightway. Can we get a little piece of land as inheritance for our kids? because they've contributed to building everything. You see, it's very easy to show videos of building blocks, building this, building that, when it's everyone funding it, but can they take it if they leave? Or are they in a position that if they decide to leave the community, everything still stays in Pastor Dowell's foundation's name? So it's very easy to promote polygyny when you're in a position that you're well taken care of by everyone and all of the donations go to your foundation. It's another thing for you to be in the real world, how humans really live in this world. And that's what makes me extremely, extremely sad. You see, because not only do I see people that tap into the Hebrew Israelite movement, and then find themselves completely obsessed with their physical 
being and their spiritual walk takes a huge hit. Listen, I'm not your typical Christian. If you look at the channel, I equally expose false teachings within the church and I'm not your typical Christian. When I say I'm a Christian, that means I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. So I am not your typical Christian that's gonna sit here and tell you and condone the things that happen within Christianity. I am not that guy. But I can tell you that I have seen so many people try to point the finger at Christianity, yet they themselves have this as a witness. Trying to go at Geno Jennings over one wife versus three wife, that's the least of your worries, sir. And I say that respectfully because I know that what I saw about you many, many years ago, and back then, maybe 2011, 12, 13, I could at least say, you know what, this guy at least has some sort of, at least some decent interest in trying to help people. That's what happens to a lot of people. It's called pride. And I pray that all of us hold each other accountable. Because let me tell you something, folks. If you are a person that claims to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, of Yeshua, you want to call him Yeshua? Yeshua. If you claim to be a disciple of Yeshua, Jesus Christ, and then you want to preach the gospel, at the very least, have some reverence. We all, at some point in time, may fall short of the glory of Jesus Christ. Every single one of us, at one point in time or another, has slipped up and said certain things that we shouldn't have said, and we repent. Every single one of us has done something that we say, oh, man. But when pride gets into that man, they make that particular sin acceptable. And my brother, my sister, and the Lord, I don't care if you claim to be a Hebrew. I don't care if you claim to be a Christian. I don't care what you claim yourself to be. If you claim that Jesus Christ, the only way Jesus Christ, God manifested in the flesh. 1 Timothy 3.16 says that God was manifested in the flesh. John 1.1, 1, 1, the word is God. John 1.14, that word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus Christ is Lord and master over your life. If you claim that, and you claim that he has saved you. Be very careful to utter profane things, to misrepresent the kingdom that you're from, and to operate in a way that is clearly unbiblical and then try to justify it because you claim to be of the lineage. Jesus Christ is definitely coming soon. He's definitely coming very, very soon. Any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart this man religion is vain. I want us to pray. And like I said, this is simply an intro. Um, the amount of people that are deceived right now by straightway ministries is large. Is very large. The ones that concern me the most are the men within the ministry that are nothing more than cheerleaders. They are the ones responsible. Instead of protecting the ladies, instead of doing the right thing for the gospel, instead of talking to Mr. Dow and say, Mr. Dow, listen, can you watch? Can you stop cussing while you're preaching, sir? Can you maybe lay off the liquor for an hour of a live stream, sir? Hey, sir, I bought them ruffles. I bought that liquor. I'm paying for your three wives, sir. Would you mind laying off all of that stuff while you preach, sir? But that's their prerogative. It's their community, right? It's their community. They can do what they want with their money, however they want it. However, when all of these people are teaching that you should have multiple wives, when they themselves do not sustain their own three wives by themselves, like I'm telling you, the real world, and you know this, you're watching this. I'm your, listen, I'm a Puerto Rican brother. I'm your brother. Listen, I'm your Puerto Rican brother. I'm being as real as I can with you. You and I both know that the most you and I make is probably like, what, 28, 2900 a month? By the time we taxes, insurance, everything gets taken out, you probably end up with, what, 2200 In the real world, let's be honest. Then you pay your mortgage, your rent, that's what, 12, 1300 By the time you're done, you what, what do you have? You have for groceries, for the light bill, for internet, and that's it. And then from there, that's and that's for one family. Yet you have these people promoting that you should have two, three, four, five. It's easy for them because they're not paying for them. <laughs> do you see what I'm saying? But they're guiding people to do decisions that aren't appropriate. I, I've heard of people that have two or three wives yet are on food stamps. And listen, don't get me wrong. If I can get food stamps, that's the best grocery shopping you could ever do. I'll get White Castles, get some cheeseburgers, get anything you can. So if you get food stamps, hey, do what you got to do. But what I'm telling you is, is 
there's a lot of people that are misguiding people in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Yah, and they'll say the most high, the most high, the most high, Yah, Yah, Yah. You can say Yah, the most high, Yeshua, say it in every Hebrew language you want, but your actions are not living what you're preaching and you're teaching to the people. But if you have cheerleaders, like those men in that video, all thanks to the most high, Yah, Yah, all thanks to the most high, Yah, Yah. You accuse me like you did Jesus. I'm a wine bibber. In this case, a beer bibber. Hallelujah. We go over to the law too. Got me some nice little strong drink over here too. Let's take the edge off of it. Oh yeah. Huh? What's going on in here? We're in serious trouble. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we want to ask that you may give us all conviction. There's not one of us in this video, including myself, that has not fallen short at one point in time or another. In the name of Jesus Christ, if today you're finding yourself that you have fallen short just even a tad bit, will you join me so that we can repent before the Lord? Thank you for your goodness, Heavenly Father. Thank you for your mercy, Heavenly Father. Father, thank you for allowing us even to get up today, Heavenly Father. Sometimes we forget from the kingdom that we belong. We don't belong in this kingdom on earth. We belong to a different kingdom in heaven. We don't belong to this kingdom on earth. We belong from the kingdom of your dear son. And you've, and you've translated us to that new kingdom and you've made us ambassadors of Christ on earth. And Heavenly Father, sometimes we live this life and as we're living it, our conduct may not match the kingdom that we belong in. If that applies to any of you, like it's applied to me in the past, in the name of Jesus Christ. Repent. Repent. But for you to repent, you may have to put pride aside. But do it. Because Jesus is coming. In the name of Jesus Christ, He loves you. He cares for you. He has an awesome plan and an awesome future for your life. And He wants you to do the thing that you need to do for Him. Make that decision for Him today. Because He's coming soon for a spotless bride. Thank you for tuning in to another weekly video. We truly appreciate that. Uh, I cannot express my gratitude enough for you passing by each and every single week. If you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do so. We have weekly videos. We also have a free ministry app on Android and Google called Truth Family. If you need prayer, if you need to simply write someone and you need to talk about something, go ahead and write me on there. Give me a day or two. I'll be more than happy to respond. Also, thank you for your ministry support. Thank you for supporting this ministry. It goes a very, very long way. This channel is not monetized. So if you can find a way to share this content, thumb it up, um, spread the word. That goes a very long way, not just for this channel, but for any other channels that you support. Uh, it goes a very, very long way. Thanks for tuning in. And um, God bless you. Jesus loves you very, very, very much.